see the living among the dead. Look at the second question. Jesus now appears to them, but he appears incognito. Pick up the narrative at verse 11. And their words seemed to be them as idle tales, and they believed them not. The words are the words of the angels who had spoken to Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and told that Jesus had been raised just as he promised him he would be. And so they went and they told Peter, and he ran unto the sepulcher and stooping down and beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Verse 13, and behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs, and they walked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and, and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes was holden, and they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you will have one to another as you walk and are sad? The first question, why seek you the living among the dead? The second question, what are you talking about these days? <laughs> what are you talking about these days? We pick up the headlines in the newspaper and there's discussion about the governor's veto over the, of the family bill. There is discussion about the United States' presence in Yugoslavia. There's discussions about the ramifications of Y2K. We pick up the newspaper, there's discussion over our president's foreign policy. People are talking about a lot of different things. And even Christian people are talking about a lot of different things. So Jesus asked his disciples, what are you talking about? What are you communing about? What are you dialoguing with each other about? Look at what he says in 17. He says, because your manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are too sad. <laughs> Why are you so sad? He said, there's something about your communication. There's something about your conversation. There's something about the discussion that you are having that is pulling you down that you are sad. Yes, yes. That you are in a state of mourning. And if you back up and if you look, and what they were talking about, they were talking about all those things that had happened to Jesus. Verse 18, and the one of them whose name was Cleophas answering him, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast not thou known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, what things? So the second question was, what are you talking about? The third question was, what things are you talking about? And that Jesus asked them the question to solicit from them their understanding of the events that had transpired. Now follow him here. And see, so Cleophas and the other disciples, they start to talk to Jesus. And they start to inform him about everything that had happened. And they talked to him about the ministry of Jesus of Nazareth and the miracles of Jesus of Nazareth. And they talked to him about the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. But they never got beyond Calvary. They never got beyond the darkest day in history. And so in their discussion, in their conversation, it all culminated, it all ended on Golgotha's mountain of Calvary. And that's why they were so sad. Yes, yes. And that's why their spirits were down. Yes. And that is why they were so defeated. Right. If you stop at Calvary, if it all ends for you at Calvary, if you tarry too long at Calvary, right. then Calvary can be a discouraging, disappointing, depressing place to tarry. Yeah, so Jesus wanted them to understand that they had to move beyond Calvary. Yes, Calvary is the great demonstration of God's love for us. It's on Calvary's hill where the Son of God hung there as the sin bearer, bearing in his body the punishment for all of our sins. But God would not have us to tarry there. He does not want us to stay there and to remain at Calvary. 
He wants them to understand that we should move on and we should press on to Resurrection Sunday. And so he says, what things are you talking about? And so they shared with him the things that they were talking about. In verse 24, and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found that even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. So these disciples, as they are rehearsing to Jesus the events that had transpired, they end their dialogue with the empty tomb at Calvary. Yes. And Jesus responds in verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe that all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Let's stop right there. The first question of why do we seek the living among dead things? The second question, what things are we talking about these days that's causing us to be so sad? The third question was, what things that they understand about Christ? What things do you understand about Christ? What things do you understand about his work and his ministry? What things do you understand about the continuation of his life in and through his disciples? It is a, it's important that we know what it is that we understand about Jesus. It's important that we understand what it is that we know and that we understand about the life and the ministry of Jesus because if we're not sure of what we know and what we understand, then we're not going to have the confidence and the holy boldness to have faith, even in the face of death, to have hope even in the face of difficulty and hardship. So he wanted to solicit from them what things is it that you understand about this Jesus of Nazareth? And they share it with him. And then he poses a fourth question to them. He says, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses, the book says, he began to expound the prophets unto them and all the things in the scripture concerning himself. You see, once we get a, a fuller understanding of Jesus and the things concerning him, then we can see him. We can see him beyond the sacred page. We can see him in the book of Moses. We can see him in the prophets. We can see him in the Old Testament concealed. We can see that he was just not an accident. He was not some aberration. We can see that it's all of history is his story. And so he began to spawn all these things about himself. And the Bible says up until this point, their eyes were still holding or they could not understand. They could not perceive who he was. There was something about Jesus, his post-resurrection, where he could veil himself to where they could not recognize who he was. But then look at what the text says in verse 30 as we move to close. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them. Is that a familiar scene? And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And then the final question, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, while he opened the scriptures? To us did not our hearts burn so the final question is 